Welcome to another episode of Unleashed with yours truly, Colleen Diedrich. My very, 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 I notice how much very I'm putting out a statement, my very, very special guest is none other than Poom Poom Specialist, Vagina Lady Extraordinaire, <laughs> Miss Ramona Riley. Uh, today we're going to be talking about endometriosis, right? But before we get into that conversation, I want to talk a little bit about what is currently happening. Now, for the most part, I have made a conscious decision not to talk about our current situation, right? And by current situation, I'm making reference to the virus, COVID-19. I feel very inundated with all of this information. Every single one of my group chats, somebody is sending me something, the latest update, what it is that this government is saying and doing about it. And when we tell you, say overwhelmed, I have not opened one. Mm -hmm. And not to say that I've been burying my head in the sand, you know what I mean? Right. I have been taking the necessary precautions and so on, but I feel that to keep abreast with the news, the CNN, the NBC, and, yeah, all and of our it. them, and the rest of them, or whatever else, is to inundate myself with fear. And I've made the decision that I'm so not going to do it. Yeah. As best as possible, I still have to go to work. Mm -hmm. So as best as possible, when I say my prayers I'm done, I'm out. Right. Um, that's it. How has this whole thing been impacting you? Um, well, I mean, for me, I guess I'm kind of in that same boat, you know, I, I get the texts, I get the emails, um, some I read, some I don't read, uh, but it's really for me just about really just making sure that there are certain protocols that I take, mm -hmm. you know, I can't afford to necessarily just not like live and be and, you know, function, um, especially being a mother with three children and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I definitely have to take certain little precautions. So, of course, you know, we do the washing hands more and the sanitizing and, you know, those types of things. But I, I'm, I'm a little worried about... The holy heap alcohol? Yeah. I'm a little, hand sanitizer I'm them? A little, I'm a little like worried about realize the toxins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, even like the Lysol spraying and oh. all these things that's happening, you know, um, it's 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 going to definitely affect the body in the long term mm -hmm. it has to i mean it's all toxic it's all toxic you know and we're doing it in our cars while the ac is on and we're doing it in the house while it lock up and you know and you're gonna find out sinuses become an issue mm -hmm. skin cancer becomes an issue you're gonna find out that a lot of things become an issue i don't know if they're going to necessarily tie it to that absolutely they might blame not. it on something else absolutely but it's a reality definitely a reality my my god my love as much as possible i am trying to go the natural way so vinegar mm -hmm. for me for the hand washing and them things mm -hmm. so the vinegar right outside of that i have started taking a tablespoon of coconut oil okay nice because i hear that this thing is phenomenal it in is. terms of fighting bacteria and it all of this kind of a it's, stuff it's amazing right? for almost everything i am te what Trust me, trust me. You can trust put me, some so. on your belly button. I, oh yes, for which one now? For what? For just anything in like, just like how you swallow the coconut oil once mm -hmm. a day, put some in your belly button and make your belly button absorb it. It's really good for your digestive system, your liver, your all of that stuff. So that would be a good place also to kind of build up the immune system. No, so, well, I'm very happy for hear about that one there. <laughs> but the, the, the coconut, the coconut water, and as much as possible, I am having my vegetables, so green yes. juice and and juicing and all of these things. But awesome. as far and vitamin C, and me yeah. is not a vitamin taking girl, so I bought vitamin C only for my daughter. Okay. And the other day, you know, feel my throat start to feel like a funny. I get paro. I said no, but I wait there. Take it. What? <laughs> I start to take it. So outside of that, though, I am a living. Yeah. I am living, I have to meet with people. Mm -hmm. Every day I have mm -hmm. to meet with people. And as right. I said, I try my best to observe protocol, but I have decided that in all of this, I'm going to live. Yeah. I'm going to live. Exactly. I'm going to live. If you're taking care of your immune system mm -hmm. and you're building it up and you're protecting it, I mean, really, can you really get anything? I mean, anything. I mean, forget about, you know, corona and all of that, mm -hmm. but just anything. I mean, any STD, anything. Can you really get these things if your immune system is high? I don't once think you're so. doing, once you're doing what it is. Once you're doing what do. you need to do to make it high, I think you're okay. So, I think that really needs to be the focus. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, like keeping your immune system high, you know, and these are all the different ways that you can do that, you mm -hmm. know, instead of 
necessarily the alcohol spraying of the yes. hand and all of that, you know? But the bathing and the alcohol. Yeah, like oh people are God. literally and bathing the hand in it. sanitizers. Them soon start to swallow it. My name is not about getting it. My name is not about getting it. Not at all. Okay, but back to the you know the the topic at hand. Okay. The first time I came into the term endometriosis was probably about two years ago. Literally, I didn't know what it was prior to, right? And um, I think there was some kind of sensitization program that was taking place, and I heard the term and I realized, okay, fine, this is this seems to be something that women are affected by. Mm -hmm. So I start to pay attention and so on. But b prior to that, I never knew nothing about it. What exactly is endometriosis? Okay, so endometriosis is a estrogen-driven condition. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is your estrogen that is extremely high, which is what creates this issue. The issue is usually around the lining of the uterus, okay? So it makes the lining of the uterus um, not as healthy as it should be. Mm -hmm. What it also does sometimes, which is why endo becomes worse for some client, some women versus other women, is that it creates scar tissue. The lining starts to attach itself to different organs. Oh, yeah. And there becomes a lot of buildup. So there can be buildup in the pelvic area, mm -hmm. around in the back, down in the legs, connecting, you know, your digestive system to your reproductive system. I mean, they're all connected, but I mean literally connecting them. Right. Um, and it is scar tissue that is really correct, um, connecting, connecting them. them. Uh, so that's pretty much what endo is in terms of what's happening inside. But for women who suffer from endometriosis, I mean, there are certain, there are certain symptoms that are usually like hands down, every woman who has endo suffers from these things. Mm -hmm. And it's things like really bad period pains, you know, mm -hmm. really bad back pains during the period. Uh, sometimes she has cramps before the period, during the period, after the period. Mm -hmm. Leg pain, a lot of leg pain. Um, sometimes the leg pain can start from the knee going down the leg, and other times it's from the pelvis going down into the knee. Mm -hmm. um, it comes in different forms when it comes to that, but usually there is some leg pain also. Um, but the, the leg pain is different. Okay, so I work out, mm -hmm. and some of the days I may, may I lift some wicked, wicked um, weights, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I will go home, and the next day, I will feel the muscular discomfort. Right. Is, um, is somebody able to discern that this isn't muscular discomfort versus just pain that I should be concerned about? Yeah, How? I mean, for sure, because mm -hmm. for us, or for you, for example, you go to the gym, and you know the next day you're in pain. It's muscle pain. You mm -hmm. feel the muscle pain, mm -hmm. okay? For a woman that suffers from endo, it is not just muscle, it's nerve, it's joint, oh. it's everything. It's all of it. It's all of it. So this is not just normal leg cramp or normal, you know, my, my, my quads are, mm -hmm. you know, like it's not about that. It is literally about every aspect, every bone, every muscle, every everything hurts. Wow. And she didn't work out yesterday. Wow. She probably never works out because she's like, wants to jump off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it is the, so the, so the it's heavy a, periods. It's heavy periods for sure. The back pain. Back pain. Mm -hmm. um, how like how pain. are you able though to differentiate it? Because I do know some people who have heavy periods. I have all my life since I started menstruating have had heavy periods. Okay, because, okay, so heavy periods is not going to be enough. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every person not enough. That's just one of the many symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the clotting, those things. Yes, those is that is another symptom. But when you're talking about pain for endo, cramping, it's a different kind of pain. This the is incapacitating. Not, I mean, this is, I mean, this is worse than labor. Whoa. Yeah. And I've been in labor three times. It's worse. I don't have endo, but from what I understand of it, mm -hmm. from the explanation that I get from women, I have women that literally take their shirt off, find the coldest tile, maybe put down. ice on top of the tile before and lie down on it. Now, we all know that cold does not calm down like when you when you have cramps the first thing you go for is like a heating pad yes. right because it's going to soothe it mm -hmm. and it's, so that's how bad the pain is 
that the coldness is not even affecting it in terms of, I'm not even worried about the fact that it's cold. Wow. I just need this pain to be it's numbed mm -hmm. in whichever fashion it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of women who suffer from endometriosis, I mean, heat is not always the option. Mm -hmm. She needs to figure out what works better for her. Is it yeah. heat? Is it cold? Is it both? Do you start with heat? Then you're going to cold. Do you start with cold? Going to heat? Whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of like get the ease. Okay. All right. So you discover that you have endometriosis. I, in my readings, also it was suggested that you can't cure it. You can only manage it. That is a suggestion. That's so for somebody said. who overwhelmed the way you are telling me, said I'm overwhelmed. Is it, and, and um, you talked about the menstruation and the, and the back pains and the heavy cramps and so on, but does it manifest itself outside of period time? Yes. Are, you, are you feeling it outside of period Some women, so for example, if you have like stage three endo, some women stage two, stage three, stage four endo. Wait, it's going on. to So talk to me about the stages now, because you we have all, stages. Yeah, man, you talk have, to have, to have all now. different stages of endo. You have from stage zero to like four. Okay. Uh, so, zero. Yeah, so if you have stage one endo or stage zero endo, you'll realize that you don't have those symptoms that other women have. So if you have stage zero or one, you're probably not looking for a cold tile to go and put your belly on, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but when you get into stage three and stage four, or even stage two, depending on your level, your pain threshold, mm -hmm. uh, that is definitely you will see a difference in the pain. Mm -hmm. um, and the pain can be anywhere. It can be abdomen, it can be back, it can be legs, it can mm -hmm. be all of the above. Mm -hmm. um, there are some women who suffer from endo and when, when they are getting their periods or during their periods, they become blind. Blind. Why does that They become blind. <sighs> it affects the nerves. Because remember, this is all of this, all of the scar tissue is connecting itself on the nerves and the and the and the and the muscles. So the scar and the tissue is growing, growing and, and fastening it's itself to all organs all over and so on. the place. All over the place. Wow! But it sounds like a weed get when I No, it is horrible. It is literally that. And it just grows and grows. And if there's not, if you don't do things for it, it only gets worse and worse and worse, which is why at the end of the day, women that suffer from endometriosis usually suffer from depression. You've got to be depressed to have to deal with it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You've got to be. How do you, how do you manage it given that there is no cure? Well, we have to look at certain things. We have to look at the fact of, okay, number one, what usually makes endo so horrible? One of the things is the, is the circulation, okay? That's kind of what makes period bad in general. You know what I mean? Even if you don't have endo, maybe you have no condition and you just, you know, get painful periods every month or every other month. That is usually a circulatory issue. There is, blo there is blockage going throughout, you know, maybe the pelvis region or something like that. So you will get pain. My girl, let me tell you something now. You see, when I was in high school, and I think every one of the high schoolers were afflicted by the, the wicked pain, the cramping and so mm -hmm. on, right? We got nurse, and nurse used to tell us, say, it's not cramps, it's dysmenorrhea. But at no point, that they used to call it. And wow. then if I don't remember nothing else, I remember it's dysmenorrhea, and she draw for the hot sinting mm. and put it in the hot mm -hmm. bag, right? And you rest on the belly, and you lay down, and you sleep, and it's one of the, the sweetest sleep you ever get mm -hmm. at the people in school. However, I come to, I, I, I came to anticipate the discomfort, but I never not once thought it was as a result of bad circulation. I just thought it was a feature of the Period. uterus. Yeah, man, the uterus a pop down, it's it a do mm -hmm. it's supposed to do. And this is what happens. Exactly. So and I and, and I'm certain I am not the only person who's convinced that that is the case. So mm -hmm. yeah, tell me about circulation. No? Yeah, because I mean remember it's blood and all of that. So as the and circulation comes in many forms um, when it comes to just reproductive in general because if we talk about the pelvis, right? Mm -hmm. The blood going through the pelvis, the blood um, coming from the uterus. There's just a lot of more blood work going on during your that period time. time. Right. So if you don't have proper circulation, then oh, it is going to be it. a much better, much worse situation than someone who circulation is more of a, he a healthier so place. So tell me now, as little girl in a school, 12 and 13 or 14, where I try to tell me, so we have bad circulation yeah. when we're young and active yeah. and then something there? Yeah, you have I can understand at our age. Blockages, now, yeah. 
blockages yeah there are blockages so that's why like self massage is really really good like every morning every night i mean just in general from you have some from you're a woman that has her period a young girl that has her period doing self massage on the abdomen on the pelvis right above the vagina is really important if you do that you're going to realize that your period um pains are much less i'm not asking i'm telling you I started the self massaging only when I started to experience cramping prior to mm -hmm. prior to the um prior to the, the period to the, exactly but and it was it was kind of like you know when your mind just tell you, you you're feeling discomfort so you automatically rest your hand where you're feeling discomfort mm -hmm. so you start to rub and you're waiting and I'm saying hold on but this is this is alleviating some of this discomfort but I didn't know that it was something that was available to me mm. outside of that you know what I mean right as a pain management strategy it's a great pain management strategy mm -hmm. great 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 and if you suffer from endometriosis because of all the scar tissue it helps to soften the scar tissue so the regular massaging. massage so I mean we're talking about you know getting some you know some decent oil what makes sense that's gonna like you know be good for your body as well what kind of decent oil? like coke like you know virgin the coconut oil mm -hmm. or almond oil or any of those I wouldn't necessarily use castor oil even if it's the cold pressed organic one it's a little thick it's harder to kind of massage it in mm -hmm. um, but those thinner oils grapeseed oil grapeseed um, coconut oil hemp seed oil any of those types of oils you can use and just really focus on all of there from the mound of the vagina all the way till your belly button just really focus on there mm -hmm. rubbing a circular motion don't press too hard just take your time and just show your pelvis some love okay so somebody said wow well, the other day that happened to me and I drank Cersei and the next month it was all better so I do believe because Cersei thins the blood okay so she's saying that she mm -hmm. believes that the whole idea of mm -hmm. the, the arms don't be Cersei every month though Cersei granny used to tell me she has something like well now purify the blood yes. so you do it maybe once every three months yeah or something you don't along want to do you don't want to do say i mean even if you're doing it um three days in a row or something like that once you're finished with that you don't do it for a while again it is extremely strong there are many other things that we can use to purify our blood that does not have such um strong effects on like our liver and all those mm -hmm, other things as mm -hmm, well right mm -hmm. so seriously is not something i would recommend for somebody to drink on a daily basis or a weekly basis because you're trying to get proper healthy circulation mm -hmm. i would tell you drink some saril every day or hibiscus some... or whatever you want to call it okay you know that's much better cir for circulation and it's much easier on the body mm -hmm. you know in terms of the like body that. processing and so mm -hmm. on and not breaking down other organs and that kind of thing okay now um management what else is available to the woman? Um, okay, so when we look, when so we're looking at um, the whole endometriosis situation, and we know that okay, circulation is an issue. Mm -hmm. Another issue that we have is scar tissue. So we have to figure out a way of how are we not going to create more scar tissue to be grown, and also how do we soften the scar tissue now that we have it. The thing is, I hear women operating because of the amount of scar tissue. Right. And the fact that they've started to intertwine themselves with major organs and right. so on, right? So is this the go-to? Is this the only option available to them in terms of the operation? No, or because after the operation, you get SARS tissue from the operation. Right. Right. So that's really not the best thing. I don't what the think. doctor was say are the best thing, I mean, especially if it start to tangle up with liver and major yes. organs. If you're talking about that they are connecting, then I would say yes. Do your surgery to you know disconnect. Mm -hmm. But if you focus just on the surgery situation, every two years you will have a surgery, and every two oh. years you will remove the scar tissue, but more will be created. And as we know, when we cut anything, mm -hmm. it grow back and it Wicked grow back and stronger, with, a, with, with, a with a vengeance. vengeance. Yeah. My point exactly. So in softening the scar tissue, that would be a great way to be able to relieve a lot of the symptoms as well and manage the endo. Uh, softening scar tissue can be done in a few different ways. Usually heat is definitely a way to help that. Um, massage is a great way to do that. So castor oil treatments, mm -hmm. um, which is usually just like, you know, cold press um, castor oil that's put on your abdomen mm -hmm. with a special cloth. You kind of just lie there with a heating pad. Mm -hmm. uh, that really helps to soften the scar tissue. Right. Vaginal steaming helps to soften the scar tissue also. 
um, yeah, it's just a lot of heat, mm -hmm. you know. Um, now, it's one thing to soften, but we also want to remove, right? Because that's the whole reason why people have the surgery, because they want to, to remove get, mm -hmm. the scar tissue. So things like serapeptase, um, which is a supplement, uh, I recommend it all the time. It is really, really great for removing the scar tissue. And then things like ginger is great for softening the scar tissue as well. Mm -hmm. So if you can do ginger and serapeptase and do your massage and make sure your circulatory system is healthy, most likely the symptoms that you would usually have, you might not have. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, though, what we really do need to focus on other than these effects that the endo has created right. is what is causing the endo which is the high estrogen level well, all right high bear in mind as women we have whole heap of estrogen that's how we turn woman we're supposed to or, have so estrogen then when you say how do you how do you determine that your estrogen your estrogen level is too high okay so if you have been diagnosed with certain conditions mm -hmm. okay like fibroids any kind of cyst it could be polycystic ovarian it could be simple cyst whatever cyst uh endometriosis all of those are high estrogen conditions so just knowing that you have that condition mm -hmm. your estrogen is high how is it something that we are ingesting that makes it high sometimes okay sometimes it's that sometimes our body is producing more than right. it should mm -hmm. right but sometimes that can also be connected to the food mm -hmm. uh, that can be connected to the lack of um, mm -hmm. what should I say detoxing that is happening in the body okay mm -hmm. because if there are too many toxins in the body there's too much waste in the body then the hormones are going to be off it's going to be having to fight too much, mm -hmm. right? So it can't produce what it should or it's overproducing or something is going haywire right. because of all the, the waste and all of the toxins that's mm -hmm. in it. So getting a hold of that is also really important. So, okay, what are you suggesting in regards to that now? How, how are we remo removing the toxins? What, okay, there are so we many need, ways that you can do. That's a washout. <laughs> there are many things you can do. Washouts, yes. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, as we said, washouts, you don't want to be doing that too long, mm -hmm. right? Um, and if you're doing a washout, that means that you also need to watch your foods that you're eating. You can't do a washout and then tomorrow you go and eat like heavy food like pork. Like That's kind of like defeating the whole purpose, right? right? Uh, but washouts can work. Um, be careful with washouts also because sometimes they can, it can create like, it can remove a lot of the good bacteria that's in the right, body also. Right, right. That's so what we, I heard. we want to definitely make sure that it is not too strong to wipe to where it's doing that. Mm -hmm. um, you can also do like charcoal. Charcoal is great for removing toxins. Mm -hmm. Really, really great. Uh, I make a charcoal latte for my children, mm -hmm. you know, and I just get some coconut milk and some almond milk mixed up together, put a tablespoon of coconut oil in there, put a little nutmeg, put a little cinnamon, put, you know, a tablespoon of charcoal, blend it up, you know, heat it up. They love it. Put a little, whatever sweetener you're going to use, often honey. How are they having that? Um, I used to do it much more often. Actually, when we were living in South Carolina, I'd probably do it like once a week mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. depending on what's going on um now they probably get it once a month <laughs> <laughs> All right. so that helps to remove the toxins yes that right. helps to also remove the toxins mm -hmm. um there are there is this this herb called burdock root mm -hmm. that's extremely good also for um it's good for cleaning the blood uh, so that would be also a great thing to do because we want to clean the blood. We want to make sure the blood is healthy because most women who have endometriosis, the blood doesn't smell right um, or it doesn't look right. What do you mean it doesn't smell right? Well, I mean, well, when you have a period, uh, some women, the, the period smell. Like it smells, like they, can, it, they smell it. Like before they probably even fill up the pad. People when they tell you that the, the blood smell, it have a smell. What are you saying? That blood not supposed to have a smell? I mean, your period blood shouldn't smell like offensive. Oh, and whoa. And there are people whose period is offensive? Yeah. And they change their pads regularly. Not because, because, because they don't want to mm -hmm, have to the, deal with the it. smell. Not because the pad is full. Okay. You know, it's the smell. The smell. And a, a lot of women suffer from that. You know, not just women who have endo. 
Okay, just you in know, general. Just in general. And that is because of toxins? That's, that's toxins, of- that's waste, um, that's the that's circulation, the blood is not clean. And so you find that a lot of those women will get a lot of yeast infections mm-hmm. or bacterial vaginosis before the period comes or after the period right, ends. Right, 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 right. Okay, so how do you handle that? This is where you, you get back to the, char- the, um, the, the, the charcoal. Yeah, the- so you do charcoal, you do burdock roots. Mm-hmm. Um, you can try some steaming. For some women it helps. For some women it doesn't help as well as it, as, as it does for others. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just diet. Watch your diet. Diet is huge. Uh, I would say probably not eat meat during your period. I've always heard that. This whole idea that you want to restrict the amount of um, meat that you're eating because it's blood. Mm-hmm. Right? And mm-hmm. you want to increase your vegetables. And it, and it takes a lot of, it takes, it puts a lot more sp- pressure, pressure on process. the digestive system mm-hmm. during that time. Right. You know, so we don't want to do, we don't want to have to stress out the digestive system too. Mm-hmm. Like the reproductive system is already stressed right. by all of the contractions that, you know, the uterus is doing and all this extra blood and all of right. these things. Do we really want to have to add like our digestive to this situation and make it a worse situation? Right. right you know, right. so food definitely is important. It's mm-hmm. important. So tell me now, in, in terms of arresting endo, because I hear women talk about how much it is impacting their lives it's painful sex mm-hmm. it's um some women are infertile mm-hmm. are rendered infertile as a result of of, yep. of of it is there you mentioned that there are four stages is there any particular stage that a woman can stop it from escalating to the place where you know she won't she won't ever be able to have a child okay so when it comes to endo mm-hmm. or fibroid cyst any of that it has to become a lifestyle change. Mm. If it doesn't, it's going to come back. It's going to be worse. No matter if you surgically took it out or you use holistic methods to take it out, mm-hmm. it will come back if you don't maintain this area, mm-hmm. right? Um, as a positive area so that these things can't grow or live there. Right. So that is what is important. So no matter what stage you're at, mm-hmm. you just want to know that if these are the things that I have to do to lower the stage or to help the symptoms, mm-hmm. then I probably need to continue. Maybe not do it as often right. because now I'm not suffering as much, mm-hmm. but I need to still continue. I need to maintain. So mm-hmm. if I used to do a castoral treatment four times a week, maybe I'll do it twice a week or once a week now. All right. That type of thing. Okay. So in terms of the... When I heard about the infertility aspect of it, I was actually quite surprised because I didn't know it could, it could advance to that place, right? And I remember somebody who was explaining to me just her challenges with it. Before she discovered that she was infertile, she says they were trying to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. The doctor had suggested to her, listen, listen, listen. Let's see if we can squeeze a baby out or whatever. But she says the biggest challenge was the pain in the sex. So... She was averse to having the sex right. with, 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 with her partner. Is there anything that they can do, women who find themselves in this position, to alleviate that distress? Okay, so endo on a whole is a household issue. Okay? Household. Household issue. Mm-hmm. It does not just affect her, it affects him. Certainly. Okay, It affects the children. But apart from the children, it affects him, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we don't think about him right right so she can't give him the sex that he wants Mm -hmm. because of this condition okay Mm -hmm. so now it makes her insecure very very it makes her a little bit depressed Mm -hmm. and it just becomes this domino effect where he's feeling it he's in his feelings she's in her feelings this and then the relationship just start to come apart from the seams literally how but but how how can you how do you mitigate against something like this? Okay, so any of my clients that have endometriosis, I always recommend, even though you don't want to have to position yourself before sex, because sometimes ain't nothing nice about nothing nicer than sex is to just it just it's a random it just happen, yeah, man, right? It's spontaneous, it's nice, yeah. right? Um, for an endo warrior, endo sister, that might be harder to do because, of course, then she's not going to enjoy it. And if she's not enjoying it, probably her mate is not going to enjoy it either, mm-hmm. right? So I always recommend probably doing a steam first, mm-hmm. okay? Do a vaginal steam. 
You find that when you do the vaginal steam, it's a lot easier. The pump pump sex, juicier. Yes. That's it. The sex Check. is, yes. <laughs> yes. Right. So um, it is kind of creating heat, bringing heat to the area. Right. So um, it is bringing extra wetness to the area. Mm -hmm. um, the vagina is more swollen. Right. Um, and so you find that it's not as painful. So you're suggesting then. All right. I'm going to plan out the sex. You might have to Mega for a while. Sex. Mm -hmm. So, but how often can this woman steam? Well, it depends. I mean, how often are they really having sex? Because right now they're probably having sex once a month or once every two, three months. Mm -hmm. So, if you steam once a week and give him once a week sex, I mean, that's better than once every three months sex. I'm just saying. Wow. Because some men are just they're not getting it, and I mean, I can understand. I mean, the woman is she in a whole she's in pain. she's in pain, just lying down doing nothing. No, but you see, here, 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 here's what I want to know now. To what extent, whenever it is that you are treating, you know, your clients and so on, to what extent do they actually involve their lovers? Because I find, say, I mean, I ask the question, become a fan, say, it is harder for men to relate when you, all he's hearing is that you don't want the sex. Right. And as much as she's feeling insecure because she's unable to give it to him, mm -hmm. he's also started, he's also feeling insecure. Maybe she don't want me to, I'm going to turn around, mm -hmm. this and that, right? Mm -hmm. So to what extent do you find that women incorporate their lovers in, in, in terms of this conversation, edifying them about endometriosis, what's happening to them and so on? I don't think that the women are involving the men as much. I think they're involving them more now than they were five years ago. Okay. So there has been growth, mm -hmm. but they're not being involved as much. No, what I do find is there are men that are sending me messages mm -hmm. and DMs and calling and being like, listen, my, I need it. my, yeah, my girlfriend or my wife has endometriosis and I cannot take it no more because I cannot stand to see her in this position and I feel helpless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is beautiful to know that the men are standing Reach up out. and just being like, yo, there's got to be, we've got Help to be power. something. Mm -hmm. We've got to do something, you know? Right. So that's a really good thing. But yeah, women aren't involving the men the way they should. And if they did, they might find that there's a little bit more support. But I think from another angle, the women just don't want to feel like they don't want the men to look at them a certain way and not think that they're strong and they're this and they're, you know, all these positive things. So it's better to not really talk about it. But, it's better for me to just say, no, I'm tired. I can't bother to have sex today or no, my back are hurt me or something to, to, instead of going into honey. This, this is my disease that I have. Right. This is what happens, blah, blah, blah. Because even with me, with andenmiosis, mm -hmm. sex was horribly painful, you know. Painful, painful, painful. I was not wanting to have sex at all, you know. And even my husband was kind of just like, yo, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? We'll go to the doctor. They check me out. You're okay. So he's just like, well, the doctor say you're okay. So, so then like, run, so run like it, what's your different? It, you know, it. this is all in your head. Blah, right. blah, blah. Whatever, whatever. Until I was diagnosed with it and realized that it was such a bad stage, you know, that um, I can't believe you're getting up every day and just like functioning like a normal human being. Right. We got to get this out. We got to take your uterus out. It's like, it's that serious, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I understand that whole painful sex thing, and it's really not easy. It really takes a hold of the relationship. But I would say vaginal steaming can really help. It really, really can help. The massages is going to help. All of those things are going to help. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a collective effort. That's what I was just about to say. Okay, so now that lover is made aware in terms of what's happening and the discomfort and so on, is there any way that he can help the process? So outside of... Having the knowledge, is there anything that he can do in terms of participating? Because I feel as though that would help to build up the intimacy. So yes. Maybe I can't penetrate her and give it to her the way I want to give it to her right now. But being able just to rub our belly with some of the, the, the castor oil and talk yeah. about it, you know, that can also soften her and help to make her ready yeah. for some I sex think and if so you, I think there... if you slowly peel back her layers, mm -hmm. you're going to find that you, can, you, you will be able to get the sex more often. Um, or how you want it from mm -hmm. a woman that suffers from endo or anything. Maybe she could suffer from nothing. Right. Men don't really take the time to slowly break down the woman. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that in slowly breaking her down, it only makes her vagina 
more Ready. excitable Jesus. and you're going to enjoy it more mm -hmm. because it is it's ready wetter. it's wetter it's juicier it it's has everything expanded everything it's, it's engorged it's, it's, it's good now. it's everything yes yes <laughs> yes please and thanks yes so with that you mm -hmm. know it'd be important for him to be able to do that you know what i mean like maybe as you say not focusing on penetration but focusing and fo focusing more on you know the outside of her vagina maybe mm -hmm. you know or maybe just the clitoris at this point mm -hmm. you know um but i guess after a while that can get kind of whatever too because that the man the after man a while, wants the man just wants to go in there right, right 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 so i mean you gotta give and take a little bit mm -hmm. but i would say try the steam try mm -hmm. and steam like steam like you say steam at 6 p.m mm -hmm. have sex at seven or eight or nine right it's gonna be much better. So she not have to tell him says she had the steam. She does herself. not have to. Right. She just come with just it steam. ready. And he's going to be like, Wait, what is happening? And this and, <laughs> and you expect me to don't want it and a right, side night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so steam before. Steam just before. to alleviate some of the discomfort. Yes. Okay. Just don't steam while you're on your period. Don't steam while you're on mm -hmm. your period. Is there anything else that you would suggest to her? Um I mean, I would definitely suggest that you guys go more into role play, not role playing, but um, when we're talking about like breaking down the woman, mm -hmm. um, foreplay is important. Mm -hmm. And I think if men and women know how to do foreplay with each other, right. you find that again, you know, the vagina is going to get more supple and mm -hmm. more excitable and mm -hmm. more relaxed and the pelvis is more relaxed. Absolutely. Right? right? So I would definitely recommend doing some foreplay. All A right. lot of foreplay. A lot of foreplay. And, and foreplay doesn't mean just the woman. So wait. The man forget foreplay Hold too. Hold that. Wait. Wait the baby. Wait. Can you, mm -mm. Yeah, touch upon something we're passionate about because I find that a lot of women are expecting the foreplay, especially if it is that she's in a situation such as the one that you're describing, mm -hmm. right? If she feels incapacitated in some way and the man in his way of trying to get her ready or open to this whole idea of sex or whatever, spends a lot of time servicing, mm -hmm. servicing her and then Okay, she look wet. She look excited. All right, let me get the penis in there before she change her mind. Right. But he doesn't get the same amount of stimulation in the process, right? So talk to me a little bit. So it's not me one out there champion the cause. A man must get love up and feel yes. up and suck down and yes. all of them. Because yes. something there. Yes. In preparation for the sex, yes. does the same. Talk to them, please. Yes. I mean, Edify them. I mean, it's not even just about the physical oral of the shaft. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, that's important. The man them love that. They need that. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, but just like women, how on the top of our mound, we can get satisfaction is the same way that on top of a man's mound, he can get satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Or maybe in the crease of where, you know, his, his, his thigh meets his genital area. Right. That part is very sensitive. sensitive. Mm -hmm. You know, um, most women don't know what <laughs> May I tell you that part, blank, my girl, the tongue never yet find it. Yes, your it finger needs never to yet find, find it. it. So never, ever. It, it concentrates just it. upon the shaft and the top of the penis. That's when you think I hit this. No, here at first stop. no. There's so much. The whole entire area. I mm -hmm. mean, there's just so much. So yeah, I mean, she needs to, you know, take her nails maybe and maybe rub the Run back of her in. nails on the back of his, on, on his back. I mean, not craw him or scratch him but you know do something create create different sensations mm -hmm. for him because the more that he can understand the different sensations mm -hmm. is the more that he can create different sensations for uh -huh. her because if you're just giving him what he knows he's just gonna go for what he knows bang 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 oh you never come before me come you're bad <laughs> <laughs> no but that's that's how it is for a lot of women like oh my if you didn't get your coming boy i just said go or, or she has to fake it so that he most can stop. of them fake it yeah honey. we got to do something about that listen we have we're going to do a campaign listen we're to going me. to no, may I take your arm on it? May I take your arm on it? We're very, very serious now, one time, because listen to me. Oh my God. Oh my God, Ramona. <laughs> I'm get, so get open my feelings. <laughs> oh my heart. I'm hot. Oh my, no man, serious to God. This whole thing that 
And I have, I say it to women all the time, right? We cannot turn around and complain that men are lousy lovers when a lot of us have not articulated to this man exactly what it is that we need. Most of us don't have the slightest idea. A lot of us are here just waiting on Prince Charming. We'll come and we're starfishing at the bed and we are waiting for him. Come now, create the magic now. I'm ready. All right, go. Yeah. Your time. You understand what I mean? And I'm saying, and that's oh, it. That's it. I showed up. I'm naked. I'm willing. And that's all it is that yeah. I need to bring to yeah. the table. Yeah, the, the mentality has to change. It has to. And then this whole idea that we are doing the sex predominantly for his pleasure. And yes, there's a, a lot problem. of women who tap into that conversation there. I am moaning, me I scream, me I arch, me I bend up, me I talk. Oscar performance taking place in a whole heap of bedroom. But at the end of the day, it's the man alone. Release. She not release. She's she, probably never released. Never. Ne I have worked with women who never climax a whole heap of sex with a whole heap of man mm -hmm. but, and don't know what it feels like yeah. to come. It is all because we are faking it. It's the faking that's the problem. And the lack and not verbalizing what it is that you want Thank you. or need. But again, a lot of them don't, don't know, know what they want and what they need. So this whole exploration, because a lot of us have limited the sex to just pum pum and, 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 and penis. Mm -hmm. yeah? So this whole idea that we explore, let's slow down the penetration and explore this whole thing of touching your partner, checking out, okay, what works for me? Because I find that the back, the human back, is a heavily mm -hmm. unexplored area. Mm -hmm. Simple back. No, the, just the just saucer mm -hmm. back. Not to mention his neck. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? Not to mention the crevices of, 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 of the joints. Crazy nerves. Crazy nerves. at the back mm -hmm. of the knee. Most of we never discover them places yeah. in our life, none tall, because as far as we're concerned, let's get our wet. Squeeze what I refer to as the big ticket item. You draw for the titty, you draw for the body, you feel a pum pum little bit. She look like she might a little bit wet. All right, speed pan that and get, get, Yo, get to it. No, ready. She wait now. Penetration time. I'm telling you. That is it, and you're there. You're not fully, you're not fully extended. So vagina still can go some more. Mm -hmm. So when he penetrates, you're actually him hitting. He actually yeah, hitting. Yeah, the uterus not rise Nothing up. Nothing not come up yet. You <laughs> understand what I mean? So there is so much work that needs to be done in terms of understanding our partner, understanding this whole business of foreplay. Because mm -hmm. most of again, so pum pum is the foreplay for all. No, yeah, that is all. The, and, and, you're that. and you're lucky. And you're lucky. Them do that now, cause one time they're they born born out. Them some, they <laughs> understand what I mean? And some people figure so that is it. So as the vaginal lady, <laughs> as the pum pum specialist, <laughs> tell tell me, is there anything else that we need to we need to know? Um, okay, so this is just a little, like, just a little trick or something, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a woman and her clitoris hangs out, for mm -hmm. example, right? A pronounced clitoris. A is pronounced that clitoris. There we go. Nice, voluptuous. Full yes, clit. right? Mm -hmm. It's out there because it wants attention. It yes. wants to be seen. Yes. It wants to be heard. It, it wants, wants to be tasted. It trust wants me. to be everything. Mm -hmm. So you spend time there. Okay? You can spend a lot of time there. You can put maybe some pressure there mm -hmm. because she can manage it, mm -hmm. right? That is a clitoris that can manage it and will probably love that. Mm -hmm. If you have a woman that clitoris is tucked back, then you don't peel back the lips of the vagina to find the clitoris mm -hmm. to stick on it mm -hmm. because that is just too much sensation right right so with a man learning how to read a vagina mm -hmm. and i like the way he said <laughs> he's a god learning how to read the vagina gentlemen and here mm -hmm. learn Mm -hmm. You will be able to know what to do even if she doesn't necessarily tell you. Because at the end of the day, for some women, it's okay for me to tell you what I like. But for some women, they love it when you figure it out on your own. For right. whatever reason, maybe, I don't the know. The exploration is supposed to be fun. It's right. supposed to be, right? right? Uh, so if you know that, if you're a man and you know, say, when you look on that one day, you say, oh, the mound high, oh, and the lip short, oh, and the clitoris. It's pronounced, oh, okay, I know what to do. Right. Somebody have to tell you something that I mean. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. well, there you No, because you see, you're not spending time and try to read the pom-pom. No, no. The only thing you're not reading is it wet. It, 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 it wet. 
penis or, time. Or it's not wet. Let me spit on it. There you go. No, that or put it on my hand and put it on you. I hate but that besides, shit. Besides the difference, I didn't know there was that, what kind like of that difference like that with, huh? the, with, with, with the, the size difference. I said pronunciation. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's a difference. And then the same thing with the woman to the man. I mean, I mean, you can create the penis to be able to do things that it never thought that it could do either Mm -hmm. you know um and so spending time on that you Mm. know and and as you say like explore we're exploring the penis itself we're exploring behind the penis we're exploring beside it Mm -hmm. the 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 balls the everything i mean just it all works together man just get in there get in there okay so i see you advertising these classes um about the the endo use one? It. No, how to use your which endo class you have? Like okay. what we talk about endo. Okay, so on Saturday there's a free endo class mm-hmm. online, right. right? Um, that we're doing and we're talking a lot about. Yeah, we're gonna hit a little bit on endo and what endo is, but uh, it's going to be more about the treatments for endo and things to do. Mm-hmm. So it'll be live demonstration. You know, I'll show different um, massages that you can do. I'll talk about the different treatments. I'll talk about the best supplements i'll talk about diets i'll talk about all these different things if mm-hmm. your mate it can make it i would say both of you guys do it together um i will be talking about sex we'll be talking about all kind of things when it comes to endometriosis mm-hmm. it's going to be the beginning of something that we are going to continue mm-hmm. uh, if you don't suffer from endo but you suffer from painful periods or something like that please still join us because there are things that you're going to be able to get mm-hmm. that you can use even if you don't have endometriosis. Okay. So it's like an endometriosis workshop, gotcha. pretty much. Okay, tell me about the your yoni eggs. Okay. Talk to me about it because I find that there's still a lot of women who don't know nothing about yoni eggs. I would don't agree. know the benefits of yoni eggs. So talk to me about it. Okay, so the yoni egg situation is basically... It's a healing crystal that's mm-hmm. shaped in an egg form. You have different sizes, usually small, medium, and large, and they range you know, in certain centimeters, whatever. Uh, and you insert it in your vagina. Mm-hmm. You do not have to have a mate to get the health benefits mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. a yoni egg. It right. can be strictly just for you. Right. Okay? Because they're made of healing stones or crystals, uh, there are many different types that you can use depending on what you're trying to heal. Mm-hmm. So for most women, when they get a yoni egg, it is one because they're seeking like, you know, better sex, you mm-hmm. know, um, trying to awaken themselves sexually. Right. Uh, it could be for um, uh, fertility reasons. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times women get it for that sexual aspect of themselves right. to awaken it. You can awaken yourself sexually with the yoni egg by yourself. Mm-hmm. Or you can use it with your partner. Right. Your partner can use the egg and rub on your clitoris a little bit before he inserts it inside of you. Mm-hmm. You can insert it inside yourself even if your partner is beside you. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. When you're going to have sex with a yoni egg, I definitely do not recommend it being someone that is it can't like, be casual sex. No, it cannot be casual sex. No. Okay. Right. This person is going to be connected to your vagina in a whole Different other way. way. Right. Okay. Uh, so the yoni egg, the main reason why I had started to look into it and become a practitioner for it was really for the pelvic floor Mm -hmm. okay it was really about strengthening the pelvic floor strengthening the vaginal muscles so that birthing can be easier Mm -hmm. okay okay i do a lot of birthing stuff so it kind of came it kind of made sense okay apart from that though of course there is that sexual aspect as well Mm -hmm. if your muscles are toned um, or your muscles are awakened in right. the vagina, then it can make sex much better for you and, and your partner. mate as well. Mm-hmm. So the yoni egg can be used for many different things. Mm-hmm. As a physical entity, it will help with the vagina toning. It mm-hmm. will help with strengthening the pelvic floor. If you have incontinence or anything like that, it definitely right. helps that as well. How often are you practicing with the yoni egg? It doesn't matter. Tone, it doesn't matter? As much as you want. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. It's really up to you. I mean... Once a week, you will see huge differences in a month if you were to use it once a week. Once a if week. you were to use it three times a week, mm-hmm. you'd see a huge difference in a week. Mm-hmm. If you use your yoni egg once, you will see the difference. Mm. 
much less if you were to use it on a regular basis. Now, somebody asked me the other day when I was talking to her about her yoni egg and the benefits of it. Um, she asked me, "Does it give you a yeast infection? Can it? It give shouldn't. You a yeast? It if sh it, it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. If it does, you're not cleaning it properly, or where you're storing it isn't clean. Okay. And a yoni egg is not something that you have to clean off every time you use it. So, for example, if I put in my yoni egg today mm -hmm. and I have her in for however long and I take her out, I am not going to go through the same step that I got the first time I got my yoni egg if I know I'm going to put her back in there tomorrow. Okay. I just run it under some warm water, mm -hmm. wash her off, and put her back up until tomorrow. Best place to store them? I would say less light. Less light. I always put mine in like my underwear drawer. Mm -hmm. I always think that's the best place yeah, to yeah, put it. Yeah, that's where I have mine. Yeah. <laughs> and if like, if you have like a little bag or a little box or mm -hmm. something that you put in it. Tuck it away. Mine in Make a bag. sure it's clean. Yes. You know, sir. make sure the bag or the box or whatever is clean or if it's tissue it's in or whatever it is. Just mm -hmm. make sure that's clean. But other than that, you should not get a yeast infection at all. You shouldn't get a yeast no. infection. Awesome sauce. Now, when you talk about vaginal breathing, is that a part of vaginal toning? I have put them together. You have? I have put them together. They mm -hmm. are two separate things. Right. Um, because the vaginal breathing does not have to involve um, the Kegels or the vagina muscles that we're using. It can literally just be more about breath. Mm -hmm. um, and the toning can be just about the muscles and you don't really necessarily have to add breath. Mm -hmm. But I find that when you add breath, and you add the throat, it's much better because, mm -hmm. of course, the throat is like, you know, the vagina mm -hmm. in terms of the neck and the cervix. And, you know, right. it's all literally the same thing. So I usually put them together now. Mm -hmm. So vaginal breathing is going to definitely be something all about the breath. You're inhaling, you know, you're learning different ways to, to awaken the vagina from breath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Lord have mercy, I'm getting excited. I'm getting really, really excited. Now tell me, where do people find you? Okay, so there are many different ways they can find me. Mm -hmm. If they're social media lovers, social media is there. We are on IG, mm -hmm. we're on Facebook as at Cosmic Woman. Mm -hmm. We're also on IG as The Vagina Lady. That's my personal page. I don't have as much on there if you're looking for tips and that type of thing. But if you're just trying to reach out um, you can definitely reach out there. Mm -hmm. Gmail is a great place. I'm really surprised at how many women email me about the issues that they're having. Um, I feel like they think like it's there. It's a little easier, you know, mm -hmm. to do so. So email is an option, which is cosmicwoman at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have our phone numbers, which uh, in Jamaica is 406-2764. Mm -hmm. You can get us on WhatsApp on that as well. And our US number, which is would be US and the rest of the world, of course, Eight zero three two six nine seven five eight seven. Okay, where is your office located? The office is at Ten Argyle Road, mm -hmm. which is between Lady Musgrave and Braemar. Tell me what are your hours? Nine to four thirty. If you want a consultation, that um, you'll definitely have to make an appointment for that. But mm -hmm. if you're coming in just to buy products, anywhere between nine and four thirty. Tell me what are some of the products that you carry? Oh my gosh, we have so many. Okay, so we definitely have like yoni eggs, of mm. course. We have vaginal steams, yes, of course. Uh, but we do a lot of supplements. We do a lot of like, we do like iron, we do magnesiums, we do a lot of herbs, a lot of um, teas for like your period or for hormonal balance, uh, that type of raspberry. thing. Yes, we do red raspberry, which is amazing and something that. I mean, every woman, young girl who has a period should Supposed be on, drinking, should yeah. definitely be on. Uh, red raspberry does not help to balance hormones. Mm -hmm. So I usually like to say mix it mm -hmm. with something that does, um, like a red clover, for example. Right. So our womb tea has, you know, red raspberry, red clover, chamomile, all those different things in it. So it makes it kind of like a, we're hitting the uterus, we're hitting the hormones, we're hitting a little digestive, we're hitting a little circulatory, and it kind of makes a nice little blend. Mm -hmm. um, and red raspberry is in that. But in general, red raspberry is really good for anything period-like. Mm -hmm. Anything period-like. Okay. All right, so there are the teas. Anything else? Uh, I mean, we have pads. We have, right. Tell me about your pads. <laughs> okay, so we're really, really anal about using generic pads, mm -hmm. okay? Generic pads have a lot of negative entities in there. We're talking chlorine bleach, pesticides, <sighs> plastic. 
Um, some have fragrance. It's really toxic to the body. Mm -hmm. And you find that if you stop using those and using natural pads that do not have those types of things, your period will be a little lighter. Mm -hmm. um, it will definitely be shorter, yeah. that's for sure. Uh, so we definitely try to push the, the non-traditional pads. Mm -hmm. Not that you can't do a diva cup, Mm -hmm. um, diva cups are the stuff that you insert that right right it's right. a it's a surgical plastic healthy plastic that you would um, put in your vagina it catches the blood mm -hmm. you would change it like once a day or twice a day some you know it's depending you, on your flow. depending on your flow you right. don't have to take it out when you pee it's really convenient financially it makes sense you mm -hmm. buy one for six thousand dollars and it lasts three years I so mean, you sell diva cups I do not sell diva cups why are you not selling diva cup like, come on. Okay, so that is a suggestion. That Please is a suggestion. Thanks. You need to get with it. Okay, <laughs> then. Right. Um, but the pads that we have are called Cherish, and we also have Jewel. Mm -hmm. um, both of these pads really help to shorten the period, help to allow less bacteria to be stored in the pad so that you are not chafing yourself yes. or giving yourself yeast infections or any other type of infection because the blood necessarily isn't so clean mm -hmm. so we have the cherish we have the jewel that's there available at the office as well mm -hmm. we also have different treatments also so we do physical treatments too so we we sell all these different products but we also do physical treatments right so if it is a detox treatment that you need you would come in i would ask you a few questions and we would kind of i'd kind of realize what's the best detox for you because mm -hmm. of course there are many so i might decide well most most everybody will get a castor oil treatment first okay then after that it depends on what I find or what's going on. We can do um, navel candling. Mm -hmm. We can do mm -hmm. um, a clay treatment on the abdomen. We can do a womb massage. Uh, it really just depends on what is needed. Mm -hmm. So we have physical treatments that we do at the office as well. And we do vaginal steams at the office also. Cool. Yeah. So we do that at the office. So you can always come and do that as well. Mm -hmm. Well... It sounds as though you are definitely saving the world one vagina <laughs> at a time. Like. <laughs> and That's think, our motto, you know that. No, I know this, I know this, I know this, I know this. And I think I applaud what it is that you're doing. I think it is much needed work, especially in the Caribbean, where um, the whole idea of our vaginas is still is, is still uncharted territory. Can you, you know? say it? Yeah, man. No, Can't heaven say the word. Vagina. Oh my God. Vagina. Yes. Vagina. Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> So for you to be doing this, I think it's extraordinary. I think it's phenomenal. Thank you, my friend. I am wishing you all the best in your endeavors. Thank you. Right? Come here, say you come here now. 100% you're the Pandorak. Yes, me on the Highland. Jesus. I am oh my here. God. Them can't find you any and every time. Every time. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. I want to thank you. Thank you. you, know, you for taking for part in our conversation, Telly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you're most welcome. Okay, so you have just seen another episode of Unleash with yours truly, Colleen Diedrich. Please, please to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And until next time, stay safe. Blessings. Blessings.